So hi, hello, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Homeopathy Musings. I'm Dr. Manali Kesarkar, resident doctor at Healing Harmony. I welcome you all today. So today, I want to introduce you all to the Musings team, the whole uh, team behind the work that we do, our Musings core team. I want to introduce you all to all of us. And... Uh, we, so our musing score team is mostly female led and we have doc, we have asmita patkar our admin head i dr manali kesarkar uh, being the resident doctor dr hema gadaiya the resident doctor and dr shilakshmi anand the resident doctor we have two new uh, people joining us uh, our musing score team dr falguni kothari and dr vaishnavi bharate so we are growing as a team and we want anyone who, whom of you all are interested to join us, our team, uh, the work that we do as uh, for learning, for sharing, everything, you can join us or feel free, free to contact us if you would like to join our team. We are growing and we are expanding. We are also looking for passionate homeopaths uh, who are keen to join uh, join us full time in our Malad clinic in Mumbai. So if you know anyone or uh, any anyone of you all who are interested and who stay nearby and wish to join us, mm -hmm. do let us know or you could contact us. I would like to introduce you all to Dr. Rajul Shah. Uh, she's a senior homeopath and an accomplished therapist. We had done a previous workshop uh, with Dr. Rajul Shah last year and it was well received by everyone. Um, she works, uh, she runs a busy clinic with Dr. Shraddha and Dr. Jayesha in Mumbai. And she works in sessions and workshops uh, with her process known as ERP, emotion releasing process, which we'll know more about today uh, through this session, uh, through cases and through her live demonstrations, how patients feel after the process within few minutes. And, uh, yeah, I welcome Dr. Rajul Pham today. And uh, also we have this repertoire of learning as we told you all um, last time as well, uh, where you could muse and reflect and view past recordings of musings. Uh, this is a page, musings repertoire, which has all the recordings, past recordings of musings in the form of um, sessions which are club sessions. We have the mammal series, uh -huh. the mammal series. We have the reptiles, the lack remedies. Coming, uh, coming. Rare, rare remedies. Three. Sorry, sorry about the disturbance. We have the rare remedies, uh, the psychiatric cases, the boron case, the meditative case taking. The, so many, many cases which were done during the past one, one and a half year in the musings or as modules are available in the form of this learning uh, as musing repertoire, which we called it as continued learning, which you could muse and see whenever you feel like, and you could uh, let us know if you would want to view the repertoire. Then we have this upcoming workshop uh, known as alternative healing techniques. Uh, which will be uh, taken by Dr. Rajul Shah, Dr. Preeti Shah and Dr. Prajakta Vaidya. And this is an exclusive workshop for homeopaths who could learn to integrate these therapies along with homeopathic medicines in their day-to-day -day practice on patients through emotion releasing process, meditative techniques and breath work. This program will be uh, conducted in the month of March on four weeks, for four weeks, Tuesdays and Thursdays starting from the 8th of March. It will be roughly two, two and a half hour session and uh, the timings would be 3 p.m. IST or 10.30 a.m. CET. So if you wish to join us for this program, do let us know as the early bird offer for the ERP uh, for the workshop uh, is ending by the 8th of February this month. So do let us know. For today's workshop, uh, today's session, we have Dr. Preeti Shah, Dr. Prajakta Vaidya, and Dr. Rajul Shah as speakers uh, who would take us through the case taking and how uh, emotion releasing process helps a patient as well along with medicines. 
and how it could be incorporated in the practice would be the uh, main motto of this session today. So some basic hygiene factors. Please mute your lines and be mindful that your mic doesn't remain on during the session as it disturbs the speakers. Uh, only put your questions through chats and comments. If we ask you to open your mic and speak, then you could ask your questions as well. Keep your questions at the end or if we feel like having an interactive session, we'll let you know. And make notes, share your experiences and moreover, enjoy the session. If you have any doubts or difficulties, you could call or contact us on the following numbers of the coordinators or and the recordings of for, for anything else, you could write to us on homeopathy musings at the rate gmail.com. So I guess we should start for today's session without uh, any further ado. The, Preeti ma'am, are you there? Hi Manali. Hi ma'am, good, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. So thanks Manali for this wonderful introduction. Um, glad to be here with Rajul ma'am today and uh, we'll get started. <clears throat> So what we'll do is uh, we'll do a case and then we'll share a little bit of our experiences with this case. Okay. Uh, if you can tell me you're able to see our screen. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So um, before we really get into the case, some very basic aspects, uh, but something which is very crucial, very important for us as homeopaths. Um, case taking, no? And uh, we've been learning it from our first year of homeopathy. And this is something which keeps on evolving. Uh, it matures as we, you know, um, sit on our homeopathic chair day after day, year after year. And then we realize that the level at which we are taking our cases also changes as we grow, as we evolve. Um, you know, I mean, obviously at the beginning, we need to start collecting symptoms. We need to know everything about the patient. Uh, we are very greedy. We want to make sure we don't miss out anything, etc. But along with this, mere collection of symptoms, slowly, you know, we start adding and start refining our artistic acumen, our scientific acumen, so that we can really, really go into the deeper realms of the source of the very core of that individual and his or her perception of illness, his or her source of illness. And when we do that, what happens is that homeopathic treatment, as well as the case taking both together can become a journey of self inquiry and self discovery for many patients, as it helps them look beyond their disease. Yeah, and it helps them understand that this their disease is not just an external phenomenon or an obstacle, but as a means or as a way for them to transform and evolve. It's there, it's this disease doesn't become their enemy, uh, you know, in, in that respect and becomes a tool for them to learn something, to grow from it, to transform, to accept something which they've not been accepting, not been acknowledging. So if the homeopath aims to find this fundamental perception underlying our thoughts, feelings, experiences and symptoms, we can find a very deep acting remedy. And with that, what grows is awareness. What grows is the root of the perception, the root of these symptoms. And as Dr. Shankaran says, it can be at seven levels, at the level of name, at the level of fact, at the level of feelings or emotions, at the level of delusion, imagining, Hmm? And then the level of vital sensation, energy, and the seventh level, the blank canvas in which everything basically manifests. In a forism, then uh, Dr. Hanuman beautifully explains, you know, 
that the material organism functions solely by means of immaterial vessels, the life force. The human organism is only instrument of the spirit. The human has the quality of being fully usable when it is not blocked. And disease is blocked in its use. The amount of okay feeling determines the health in a man. In health, man reacts appropriately in all situations and does not need any particular situation to exist in order to feel okay. Isn't it? So when we are saying that there is some block to manifest, to be okay, to feel this feeling of okayness, the feeling of health, we can say that delusion is a block. Example, if I can achieve only, then I will be cared for and loved. If I do this only, then I will be cared and loved. So delusions prevent us from seeing things as they are. And thus, disease is a restriction of vision. It's a narrow way of looking at things. And only awareness of this delusion can remove it. What meditation, philosophies, and you know, psychoanalysts do with creating awareness of a false perception of the present. To see things as they are. So if delusion is a disease, the block to be okay, then awareness is the cure. Yeah, are you with me? So what is this awareness? Awareness is the state of being conscious of something. More specifically, it is the ability to directly know and perceive, to feel, or to be cognizant of events. And when this quality of awareness becomes impartial, that means it's not intellectual, it's not with liking or disliking, it's not with, oh, I, I really like this situation or this experience, it's very pleasurable, so I want to cling to it. Hmm? Or I'm becoming, I, this is so painful, this delusion or this experience or this sensation is so painful that I don't want it. I'm aware of it, that this is what is bothering me, but I'm, I'm struggling and I'm resisting and I'm fighting it and I don't want it. So that is not pure impartial awareness. Awareness is to see what is, is. To recognize it, to see it for the way it is. And that, my friends, is awareness. In homeopathy, awareness is created by the remedy because the remedy puts you in touch with this original situation from where the delusion came. The, the remedy can help you correct that pattern and you know, uh, that out of proportion reaction uh, to the moment. Yeah. But if you are able to help the patients to become aware of their delusions, their repetitive patterns, even during case taking or when they come to you for consultation, a deeper healing can occur. And then patients can work alongside you, alongside homeopathy. You know, you can start involving patients in their journey of self healing self-inquiry, self-awareness. So then the process becomes two-way. You as a homeopath giving the remedy, just being there, acting as a catalyst, and the patient or the client himself. Yeah. So this tool of awareness, this fundamental principle with which we are working is something that we need to really understand and then use different tools like Prajaktana use several meditative techniques uh, in case taking, just meditation with the patients, breath work, which helps us find the homeopathic remedy and also helps the patient become aware of these deeper patterns of delusions and the root cause of delusions. And that helps them heal faster, deeper, and the results are phenomenal. 
but one may say that not all cases go so deep no not all patients will sit and go very deep it doesn't matter you know no matter you are at the name level at the fact level at the delusion level the emotion level doesn't matter from whichever window you see if you are able to find that core principle the core core of that individual we can help that individual slowly and gradually transform and help them to live their higher purpose of our existence and hence it's important to learn these different tools and techniques that whatever works with whichever individual we use that because not every patient can close their eyes and go into a deep meditation not every patient will be able to do that so when if the patient is at the emotional level what is it that you can do if the patient is at the sensation level what method you can use if the patient is at the name and fact level is there a way to bring that patient a little deeper or how can we enhance their name i mean how can we help the patient at the level of name and fact that is something that we need to learn so we'll do this with an example okay we'll share this one case uh, she is a 23 year old girl she came to us with pcos and this is not a very deep sensation method case okay it's a simple case thing and let's see what happens okay she is an hr professional uh, and she basically had irregular menses and when she actually came to us it had been close to 9 10 months since the time she had not got her periods her parents are divorced uh, she stays with the mother and she started working as soon as she kind of graduated from her college and along with working as this uh, hr professional in some uh, uh, corporate organization she was doing her mba and her work was very very stressful it was very demanding it was it, you know she had to work very late in the night it was i think uh, you know the time zone was such that from, in india she would work start her work like post lunch and it would go till midnight and beyond and along with that she was doing her mba so she was very very stressed so what is bothering you the most that's what we ask you know that so uh, she said i so she was uh, having some difficult time in the uh, professional life so she said that i am trying to find another job i am scared i saw how my manager spoke to one of my colleague when he was leaving his job so she saw that and she wanted to leave the job and she is thinking that how will i tell the manager that i am going to leave okay then she has the, her exams which were coming also she had some projects to complete and a lot of backlog work was there and the time was very less and now what is happening is she doesn't like the environment of the company so she wants to leave i need a salary hike so that was also one issue for her so what is her stress her stress was whether they will release me on time or no the way the manager has reacted or you know spoken to that other man it scares her indirectly that manager blackmails like you did this that you no know? so till i move out of the company this will always play in my head so that is her stress till now they have not so she we are so what is basically what is your issue then with all these things she said till now they have not spoken badly or something like that you know but i have seen in happening in the others cases so if that same situation happened with me then i will get very emotional so i i feel like i will do something bad to them by leaving you know so all these things are playing you should have to so then they will tell me you no know, you should have told me first we wouldn't have done so much for you like this and all that whatever the manager did for her they will say and my boss asaj is very nice at times she is when she is angry she becomes is everything so I, we ask how do you feel when others speak like this to you i feel guilty about leaving the job i think differently about them 
what do you think about them i was having issue with my team member and then they changed my team but now they will ask about it no that we did so much for you you wanted to change we did that for you and now you are giving a resignation so i feel guilty about it you how will i tell them sometimes my mom also asks to say some more time and leave you know later but i couldn't do that so i feel very guilty and right now i don't feel like working also so we ask what the boss when she gets angry with you what happens sometimes i ignore but sometimes i am not able to express till now nobody was very angry with me any time it just that i heard the conversation with the other employee and i don't really like the way she spoke to him so you you saw what is she correlating what is she thinking and what is her stress basically what tells about you i like pets a lot they are like your stress busters but since i came here i am not able to keep one i like how they play how uh, how loyal the dogs are and i had pet before and this had a lot of energy you know when she spoke it was not just like how anybody will like a pet or you know they keep a dog but it it has lot of energy so we ask about it what about dogs that you like they are very cute innocent loyal tilt headed once i stayed stayed with my friends she was giving an example that once she had gone to her friend's house and um uh, she was there for a day and when i left the dog was searching for her hmm? he waited me at the door and then you know we got so attached in few days and then she started having tears in her eyes then she said what else about you i'm very emotional and then you can see it right now i right now also i'm crying you know so um, and she is very very sensitive hmm? especially about the the dogs or the animals in the she can't see them in the pain hmm it's her with her dog so we asked her ki how do you connect with these animals no she said they are suffering or they they are in pain do i can't see that what do you feel for them i should volunteer for an ngo dogs always feel that their parents would come back there was a dog who would bark and had only three legs anyone one entered she would go to get some love she is talking about that ngo where she was working my friend's dog when she was pregnant he used to sit on her stomach and after her miscarriage he got so angry with her he attacked her and started biting her they are so mature and understand they understand these kinds of emotions as well even when i used to go to the college it, it used to be the dog there were dogs who used to follow me till the bus stop once there were a boy who whistled at me and they and the, these dog they pounced on him followed him and chased him you know so the, how how protective they are after abandoning their appetite reduces they feel their owner will come back they will not eat they will wait for them they get so much attack, at, attached I had kept a dog for few days. After going back to her owner, she stopped eating for one week. I talk to them, and then I, you know, I feed them. I can connect with them more than human beings. Hmm? I connect. I can connect with people who like pets. So, favorite animal, dogs and cats. Anything except reptiles. Hmm. once she explained this once I, once what bird came flying i kept it in open in the house i was very scared but then i bought a huge cage for it and then he flew it i even had a white rat and if you give me any pet i'll keep them so i like them fear especially of reptiles lizards and snakes i can't see them walking i don't like that feeling when they are walking and you know we are watching them 
and then we, we ask about her... warm, but... <laughs> yeah so and we ask about her period she says this work from home when it, when it just started i have irregular period when period started they becoming irregular my breast became very heavy then i have bloating and then along with that the back pain okay so we ask these some leading questions too because we have some certain things in our minds for the remedy so we ask her you are you a cleanliness freak she said yes a lot i am like a cleanliness freak washing wash basin utensils and the uh, i like you know soap and water if the public toilet is not clean i will probably won't go i like cleaning wash basin i like cleaning taps so whatever little dirt i see i have to clean that hmm and are you uh, do you feel under confident she said yes are you a people pleaser she said not exactly but i'm pretty fair so she said what so then we asked her what is unfair when you when, when you are saying this so she she gave us example again i was working at job consultancy and when i was not present there would be someone instead present instead of me hmm? and so that job was to consult for that individual for the uh, job okay so if that can candidate was a walking i used to write that he is a walking but others what they would say they would say oh he is my client and they will convert him and tell him that i have convinced him or you know i have this is a reference from me like that so what happens we ask what happens when somebody behaves this unfairly with you i complain to the boss i was asked to show proof and then i showed them because i know i was correct what feelings did you have that time i was very angry at her i would never do something like this i would never keep a grudge but i wanted to make sure that she shouldn't do this again we ask her whose appreciation matters to you it does matter to me it helps me from for my work to work more before i work in a place where i was not comfortable because everyone was talking in hindi and there was no proper job sale people who are very smart so it matters to her a lot how protective are you with the close ones and family so she uh, she had parents who divorced uh, two years ago i am very close to my mom i am scared of losing her i am close to every one of the family uncle auntie and all those other family members hmm she was i think referred by some patient of us so her also how did you deal with the separation so she said i wanted that to happen but i was also scared what other people will think so there was there used to fight so much that she wanted it to happen but what will happen if other uh, if the divorce happen what other people will think about it but when that happened i was relieved we felt bad we start uh, when we felt bad when my father also started crying hmm? but how much ever we say he never listened to us so we moved out and had lot of things to divert so i got a job next day and then you know uh, some financial difficulties were there but eventually it just sorted out we ask her about her anger she said i get mood swings i am very angry at one moment and other moment i will cry it's mostly on the mom when she doesn't go to doctor i yell at her i get angry at small small reason to anyone else worst case what i'll do i can throw things i can become abusive once i threw my mobile uh, i won't throw at somebody just on the ground just once or twice i did that but i i get angry she likes cake and ice cream whether she is scared of thundering and lightning if i am outside home and if there is thundering then i just freak out sweat only in summer that is on neck scalp back and the underarms so fairly simple remedy no anybody would like to guess okay 
Any suggestions on the remedy? Uh, Dr. Aishwarya has suggested carcinosin. Dr. Patel and Samina are suggesting phosphorus. Staphys agria, another suggestion. Mm. Can you give some uh, background on why would you think phosphorus, staphys agria, <clears throat> carcinosin? Maybe uh, somebody would like to unmute and share. What were the main thing that we were seeing in the case? She was very, very sympathetic. No, she was very, very sensitive. Lot of love for animals and suffering of others. So that is why I think some of you all thought phosphorus. Yeah, if I'm understanding. And she's very close to family, to the mother. There's a lot of guilt feeling. Hmm? Even after the parents got divorced, she immediately next day she took up a job and started working. Lot of guilt feeling. And then she gives no specific examples of how uh, you know pets can be so caring, so protective, how they can sense the feeling. No? Yeah, we have a lot yeah. of suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, lot of lack can is coming. No, so lot of delusion of dirty is there, cleanliness desire is there, breast heaviness is there. The organ affection is PCOD, isn't it? So there's a lot of natrum line, a lot of themes of love, care, affection, identity, doing right, wrong is also there. Guilt feeling is there. So a lot of school age themes are also there. And there's a lot of sensitivity um, towards animals. And specifically, she spoke so much about dogs. No, So it's very clear, lack can. And wanting so much appreciation, no? So we gave her lack can. Okay. <clears throat> we gave her lack can 200. Uh, I am not, I'm not sure, Shri, did we go up to a higher potency eventually? So 200. Yeah, to, one M. Yeah, one so M. we started off with 200 and eventually we went up to 1M as in when required. And this is how her periods were. When she came to us, I think somewhere January. In the month, yeah. Yeah, yeah, in the month of June, she came. Okay. So she had not gotten her periods from April to April 2020 to Jan 2021. And then if you can see from February onwards, how mm -hmm. her menses are. So you see February... March, April, May, there was no periods. June, she got her periods again. July, no periods. August, September, October, November. So her periods became fairly good, fairly regular. She was doing extremely well with lack care. So overall, in almost 9, 10 months, she was very, very, very much better. Then what happened? Twist in the tail. Hmm? So while all her generals, physicals, her menstrual symptoms were better, her menses had regularized, she was not taking any hormonal pills or anything, she got an episode of a severe cold and cough. And finally, this severe cold just settled in her throat. And there was extreme hoarseness. And then one fine day, she completely lost her voice. Her voice just disappeared. For close to two weeks, she absolutely had no voice. Not just hoarseness, but absolutely no voice. And then slowly, the voice started coming out, but she started stammering. So her voice would just come out in a few words and a lot of it would not even be properly, you wouldn't be able to make sense of what she's saying. She went to ENT specialist, she did speech exercises and nothing was helping her. And she was going through a lot of work stress at that time. There was extremely like her work stress has really, had really reached a peak. And lack can in any potency, in any repetition seemed to not be helping her. So nothing really was helping her. 
just listen to this voice this was when the voice started coming out little bit okay okay, okay. um just tell me if you're able to hear it uh, You're able to hear it, Shri? Yeah, ma'am. Actually, I know it's like I can hear it, but it's I like mean, just the audio is coming, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Audio is coming. Okay. Yeah, so this, it was really very bad. So now we were desperate. We wanted to really help this girl. So what we did was, and she was not able to talk. So phone conversation and she, she doesn't live like, uh, I mean, she would not physically come to the clinic. So we arranged a Zoom call with her, a video consultation. And because she was not able to talk, she would chat whatever she would want to express. Hmm? But that video consultation was important because, you know, that way we could see her expressions, her body language. And so, so since we were not able to come to, you know, um, we were stuck what to do. We wanted to try something different. Yeah. So we thought we'll do this technique called as emotional release process. Okay. So... What we did, we, we asked her about what was bothering her really. So she says, my senior officers keep asking for updates and I felt like I needed a break. She wrote this to us. I work till late night and I work even on Saturdays. And I used to still give them all the updates. I felt so, so, so irritated. I felt that even after giving so much to the company, they only take advantage and they are not giving me what I deserve. After working for more than two years and being a performer, they did not give me a permanent role. I have a temporary position here. Some of my other friends tell me how employers respect employees' personal and professional time. And I'm wondering that what God forsaken uh, you know, place I am in, where I'm just working, 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 and I'm not getting anything in return. In this company, I have calls that last up, go up till 10 o'clock in the night, 11 o'clock in the night. And I'm unable to cope. I'm unable to say anything. So do you see what where it is coming down to? It's coming down to I cannot say anything so in this first round when she becomes you know this was like a moment when she realizes that she's so frustrated she's so angry she feels so irritated she's feeling that she's performing and working so hard but she's not getting the due appreciation or respect hmm? she's not getting a salary hike she's not getting a permanent job and she's just working 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 and she's unable to cope. And now she just feels, I don't want to say anything. So this was a moment when she becomes aware. And we help her becoming aware that, look, see, this is where the root is. So once you become aware, you acknowledge and accept it, that, okay, this is my problem. Ah, I realize this. 
and then after becoming aware acknowledging accepting you simply and we'll you know maybe i'll allow dr rajul ma'am to explain a little more in detail so you just work with this that yes this is what i'm feeling you know i'm feeling irritated i'm feeling this all these things which the patient says you ask them to repeat it and acknowledge it and accept it that okay this is what i'm feeling this is where my root problem is this is what the issue is and i choose to heal and integrate this part of me very simple after going to this deep seated awareness you acknowledge you accept you say it out loud and say i choose to heal and integrate this part of me and then you take seven deep breaths then you go you know once you finish that first round we went okay let's little deeper what else is coming to your consciousness right now she says i feel sorry for myself and i feel sorry for them too i'm performing so well but when i ask them about getting a permanent job they completely ignore the topic my boss always tell me that they will talk about this or they will consider this later i have 4 years of total experience in this field at this stage i should at least get a senior hr position but here i am still at the same level and i feel so bad and she cries and cries and cries and there's a very very long pause and we allow her to be in that space and then once she reach this level we tell her again now that you are aware accept acknowledge don't resist don't fight don't want it to go away so soon just be with it and say that i choose to heal and integrate this part of me and then take seven deep breaths hmm? so this was the second round then we go again we we say okay now after a lot of release has happened she's again sitting there more composed what comes to your consciousness now she says i feel forget it anyways i'm looking for another job but now i have no voice i'm not able to talk i started getting calls for interviews but since i cannot talk i'm not able to give interviews even at home they say take a break forget about everything else so we ask why is it so important for you to have a senior hr position because i want to grow in my career learn more things take more responsibilities then i used to think maybe i'm not supposed to get permanent here maybe i'm supposed to find something better somewhere else yeah so you see a, a different perspective from deep despair from not wanting to say anything about it from feeling completely lost to feeling deep sorrow and grief to coming to a stage where she says forget it as it is i'm going to find another job maybe i'm not supposed to get a permanent job here because if i get permanent job here i might be stuck here forever maybe it's good maybe it is meant to be this way and maybe i'll find something else she comes to that spectrum during the consultation and then we do the same thing again that okay this is what i feel now and i choose to heal and integrate this part of me and she closes her eyes takes seven deep breaths what happens when others don't listen if it's something that really matters to me then i end up crying in anger if they are not listening or understanding after crying i feel a little better but i have to be left alone for some time depends on the situation yes i recognize i am unable to express myself yes i realize i need to enjoy the moment now to concentrate on getting my voice back so slowly slowly 
she started becoming more more aware of her problem that yes that i am not able to say it out loud i am not able to express myself properly and this was the moment of clarity where she got clarity of her issues and then that was a good time you know to stop you know maybe uh, take a few deep breaths do a little small meditation we did a small meditation with her and she felt really really better so we had to ask a few direct question because of course we had to also prescribe the remedy so we asked her about her you know her anxiety and some direct questions uh, you know typically that was coming out so much performance so much uh, low, uh, lack of voice unable to uh, you know uh, creativity and all these performance related issues yeah so argentine nitrin cum was coming very uh, prominently but we wanted to ask a direct confirming question so we did ask for that and we gave her argentine nitrin cum 200 we gave her some affirmations for her voice that uh, you know she could she had to do at home and she completely recovered within a week after a few days she quit her job she formally put her resignation and then in uh, one of the recent follow up she also said that she got selected at two other organization and she was contemplating that which one which offer should i take she continues to do well she is back to her lack caninum state now her period and her mental states continue to do well um uh, i think uh, shri uh, i think uh, that was till november no on Jan december and january periods also came on time right yeah yeah correct on time so she is doing continuously continues to do well and this is like a very good example to demonstrate that how along with homeopathic remedy different tools we could use to make or uh, to help our patients to you know uh, go a little deeper into their illnesses and give them tools and techniques to help them better i'll pause here to see if there are any questions hi ma'am uh, so there was one question by dr samina uh, about patient uh, you asked a question to confirm the fastidiousness of the remedy or like for lactcan is lactcan fastidious it's just one mark in complete repertory can you elaborate on this please so the two things about uh, not just lactan lactan but a lot of lack remedies one is that you know they feel under confident and they feel very dirty so there is this delusion of dirty and you know lack of confidence and because of that they want to do things very perfectly yeah so more so along with fastidiousness what is important is the delusion of dirty they want everything neat and clean yeah yeah cleanliness desire so more than not just fastidiousness not wanting to be very organized and everything should be kept where it is supposed to be yeah that perfectionism but more to do with feeling dirty and wanting to be clean yeah so this is common across all lack remedies so this is a confirmatory symptom we often ask you learned this from dr gandhi sir Oh, uh, and clinically verified in a lot of lot of cases. Uh, Ma'am, Doctor Bhavish is asking how how there can be two states in one patient. So yeah, I mean we would want to think that there is one constitutional magic remedy and it will work for everything and throughout life. Uh, but it doesn't happen, right? Some acute states come up, and that acute state. basically overpowers or replaces the you know the weaker state so there two states cannot be at one time there will be only one state at one time but there are several layers right so uh, there was no longer that lactcan state and that lactcan did not help we tried it in different potencies we tried it in different repetitions 
Yeah, the, the state had completely changed. So, you know, we had to give a different value. Ma'am, apart from hormonal issues resolved by lactan, were there any other psych physiological issues reported by patient to point towards argentum nitricum? So basically, argentum nitricum, because, you know, there was a lot of work element. The work was to do very skillful work. So it was not, or, you know, the work that she was doing was not the row four work, a little more skillful, refined, work so there had there were row five qualities and at the same time she had completely lost her voice the seat of action was voice yeah the seat of uh, uh, the pathology was she was not able to express and the issue was about performance so that was the main that is why we thought of argentum nitricum so along with that we asked some direct questions. So basically, argentum nitricum was prescribed only as an acute remedy for that particular state that she had. And that state was relieved or she felt better. Along with argentum nitricum, we believe that, that the process what of happened is and the deeper realization of from where everything was stemming really, really helped her to come out of it faster and better. Oh. It was a great question to confirm about. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. No, mommy, could go ahead. No, no, tell me. I, I, I'm okay. Uh, this was uh, another question, actually. Uh, school age feeling in lack can, uh, Dr. Bhavish is asking. So, mammals or especially lactan and all the other lac remedies if you if you're following the personal evolution method and if you've seen the animal chart you will realize that the vertebrate animals within the vertebrates mammals they fall under early childhood to school age so they will have themes of early childhood natrium line development as well as school age so all of them will have these themes and uh, it's a very detailed topic and discussion. Um, there are, there's, there's a lot of material that's already available at Musings for that. But uh, uh, lack remedies have a lot of guilt, a lot of school age themes. Um, Ma'am, Dr. Rama is asking in acute case also, can we use lactan as throat issue is prominent in lactan also? We actually did not, I mean, we tried lactan first. We tried, you know, as I said, we gave her lactan, but lactan was not helping her. And hence, we had to reevaluate or go a little deeper. Oftentimes, if there is no PQRS, no, even in acutes, it's good to stick to the constitutional remedy because we knew that the lactan has helped us tremendously. So that was our first choice. But her state had changed. So we had to change the remedy. And of course, the process helped. Yes. Okay. And, uh... and I see one question by Dr. Samina. Samina, yeah. Actually starting to answer that. So the question is, in acute stage, did she develop fear of narrow place? She did not upfront say it, you know, but because we have a prescribing argentum nitricum, you know, we wanted to ask this as a direct question, you know, if she had any places, if she had any claustrophobia or, you know, fear of height. So that was just a direct question we asked, a leading question to confirm the right. Okay, okay. no questions, Manali? Yeah, man. no more questions. Okay, then with that, uh, we invite our mentor, our teacher, Dr. Rajul, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Good afternoon. Ma'am, you're on mute. Um, we need to maybe help. Yeah, so now I got it. Yeah. So thank you for this session 
and uh, it was very well explained uh, Preeti and Dr. Preeti and Dr. Prajakta. And uh, it, it's wonderful that you are enthusiastic to work with this one more tool in, in the case taking or in your practice. Uh, one thing I would like to tell about this case is that first thing uh, you really uh, use the method, this different tool at the right time, that was very good. Uh, yeah, I know that, uh, yeah, th this hoarseness, throat tissue, lack can is so peculiar, I mean, so much, uh, you know, indicated. But many times when things don't work out, I also have seen in my practice or Dr. Jayesh, uh, Dr. Shraddha and myself, we all use this methodology. That it definitely helps us to release something some at emotional level, some new remedy emerges easily and uh, it uh, enhances the process of cure and healing. That is what I wanted to mention here. Another approach is uh, since I also uh, have done a lot of studies in uh, chakra theory, like, you know, the major chakra. In that, the Throat means you cannot express what you want to. There is a lack of communication, appropriate communication. And also this throat chakra also means I don't deserve. Somewhere she said in the case that uh, they, they uh, I mean, I deserve this. It means she feels they think that she doesn't deserve it. Or Am I not deserving? Something like that. So this deserve, not deserve, uh, dirty feeling, not honoring self, all these are also the issue of throat chakra. And therefore, if you, if we can address this uh, hoarseness or inability to the loss, uh, the loss of voice, through this methodology or through some affirmations of the throat chakra, it immediately brings a shift. You will see very quick change in all the symptoms, in all that thing that she could not uh, uh, somewhere uh, resolve or the physical body did not give any kind of uh, a positive feedback. So that time this energy healing of emotion releasing process because the emotions are, are also attached with loss of voice. Therefore, if we work at the level of emotions with this process, it immediately brings a shift. It immediately gives us a kind of positive feedback. You can try it. I, I would have waited not to give any remedy and just wait that how she does in one or two days just with the process. And definitely I'll write down in her case paper this remedy so that we know that at an appropriate time we can prescribe the remedy and if she doesn't need remedy, we can just be with lac caninum or the effect of lac caninum of the chronic or the as a main remedy or state of our mind and just wait. So this is how I also started in my practice that <coughs> many times patients come with certain uh, issues that we cannot treat with medicine. For example, I would like to give two or three exam, uh, I mean the real case uh, studies that uh, I, I had a, uh, I had one lady who had fear of water and many other cold, cough and a number of symptoms. So I took her case, uh, I gave her the remedy 
she was doing very well her dreams of uh, water and uh, as if she is drowning or a fear of water everything uh, they were almost disappeared then she was not getting those kind of dreams often then she comes one fine day and she says doctor i am still afraid of water a lot we all are going for a vacation to goa and everyone all my friends and kids they are going to uh, swim they will be going to the swim in the ocean also and i don't know i'm very uncomfortable with this i said what is happening she says i'm still i think i still have lot of fear of water i said okay so let us see that we work with some another technique that may help you i'm not very sure but let us try so we i gave her uh, a separate uh, appointment for one hour and i said you come on this time and let's work in a different the take a different approach which is very similar to homeopathy and uh, this technique erp motion releasing process is also has similar principles like cure slide that we all are practicing and we are you know die hard homeopaths we know how it helps uh, magically and i worked with her that i have a fear of water then i asked what happens if everybody is going to swim what will happen why it is disturbing you at this moment she said then i will be all alone i'll be just watching them and i will not be a part of the group part of my friends i'll be all alone and just watching them then i feel jealousy also let's see or they can do but i cannot do and then i said what happens what happens then she said i'll be deprived of this fun and joy that they all are experiencing so we work with this process which i'm sure most of you are aware of and i'm uh, i would like to do one demo also today so you will know definitely what is it all about this is the karate chop point which is very important through this point all our life force from the universe is entering into our body it's a network of energy network of vital force and it spreads through the whole body it's a meridian point basically so when we charge this karate chop point which is very important we are recharging or activating our life force and our life force is generally heavily loaded with all these fears heavy emotions that i don't i'm not good enough nobody likes me i don't deserve embarrassment shame guilt i'm not loved i'm not accepted so many <coughs> this negative emotions jealousy anger hatred all these emotions along with happiness it's they are loaded in our this energy in our life force so when we experience this fear we experience hatred we experience helplessness we experience that i can't communicate and what does that make you feel helpless all these things we can release we can dissolve by doing just this by being aware that is knowing that i am feeling this accepting it acknowledging it and heal and integrate it 
that heavy emotion. So I made her do all these feelings that emotionally she was disturbed, that I'll be alone, I'll be missed, I, I, I will make all that fun and joy, and uh, I won't be a part of my friends. They all will have fun and I will be the only one who will not have fun. So we did three, four rounds and then she actually, and then when you acknowledge, you put both your hands on your chest and take seven deep breaths. So what happens? All these heavy emotions are released from your life force, from your vital force, from your energy field, because you have acknowledged that. Now, I say, then what happened? Just tell me. So she says, no, I think, I imagine that I can do it. I can swim. I can learn swimming. I still have one month to learn swimming. I, I feel I can do it. So that was the very big positive aspect that she could experience. What happens when we work on our emotion and practice this technique, lot of positivity and the experience changes. I cannot do, it is not possible for me to, it is possible for me. We experience the opposite positive polarity. And then second round, third round, and in the last, what she explained, I see myself swimming with all my friends, with my son in a swimming pool where we are going to swim. And she was so happy. That smile, that happy smile was just, amazing and she said no now tomorrow only i'm uh, you know going to mafatlal bath and i will learn uh, swimming and i'm going to enjoy so i won't be able to enjoy it i cannot do it i'm so afraid of water too there is a possibility that i can do it and i will enjoy with all my friends so Again, this also has lot of connection with your own self. This is fear of water I cannot do, which is connected to I am not that good or I don't deserve to experience happiness or I am not that lucky to experience that happiness. To be with everybody. So the whole thing gets transformed. All everything, negative feelings and emotions, they get dissolved. Resolved. And I have seen it is like homeopathic cure. It is also rapid, gentle and permanent. By chance, if it comes again, we again work on that because underlying issues maybe still need to be addressed. And this is how we keep doing two or three sessions, taking rounds, uh, whatever comes on that day. Because whatever needs to be healed will surface on that day for that session. And you actually have to hold the space. You actually don't really have to guide them also. It just happens. Everything happens because it is energy. Energy of that patient that will lead us. When patient is ready, that I want to feel happy or I want to get rid of this fear, things will just start happening. That is the beauty of this process. Like that, many other cases where I just started working with my patients 
one patient came and he said i'm unable to forget young uh, boy young me around 20 years 20 21 years and he said that i have to break uh, with my girlfriend whom we both love each other but due to some family problems and issues we both know we cannot get married it is impossible and it's okay because they have already decided for me uh, to get engaged with some girl which my parents have promised and I don't want to hurt them or I don't want to create a big problem. Similar situa situation was there with the girl also. So what he said that I am so upset, I am so miserable that I cannot forget my girlfriend and how am I going to uh, uh, get uh, engaged and marry this girl I'll be doing lot of injustice to this girl and I don't want to do this even if I go to some cafe coffee day or some restaurant where I had visited with my girlfriend I just cannot forget her it is very painful memory so we worked on all that because he is already my patient and he said I have to go to Dr. Rajul and tell her, you know, how to sort out this problem. And I said, okay, let's do this process. Just 15 minutes we did this. I said, you come after one week, we'll do again the next session. And he actually experienced that I can easily let her go. Because she also has to move on. Even I want to move on with this uh, girl with whom my parents have decided. I don't want to betray anybody. I don't want to do injustice to anybody. I want to get free from my this emotional charges that and the love that I'm, uh, I have with her. Uh, then next week he came and he said, thank you doctor. This weekend I met my girlfriend. We happily parted, separated and she also said, okay I will move on with whomever I have to marry. You also move on. We separated happily. And on the next day, I called my fiancé and I said, it was Sunday, I said, let's go out for a day trip. So I took her from morning to evening. And I could really offer my love. I could really... Uh, show my care for her which I could not have done before because I was not I, I didn't have any courage to look at her or meet her I was so much into the relationship with this girl my girlfriend that I could not accept my fiance and since then they were doing very well they had a nice courtship of few months and they got married now they have a big uh, baby girl and they are living their life very happy and he always thanks me that good that uh, we did, did that two or three sessions and few rounds of acknowledging what he was feeling here we don't want to fix anybody's problem but we just want to acknowledge our unhealthy feelings emotions those emotions that creates a lot of issues in our life suffering in our life betray feeling feeling as if people are uh, using me like a doormat or uh, uh, there is an injustice so many feelings we live with i am not deserving I'm not worthy to receive so much of fame and name. So many things we don't know. So when you first of all start with your whatever problems you have. And then you will actually realize that my problem is how can I deserve so much of name and fame? How can I deserve so much of money? If I have money, people will come and ask for loans. And they, will, they may not give me back. 
if i have money money can create so many uh, quarrels or disharmony in the family all these beliefs all these associations that we come across we we get more aware of through this problem it can come with the hoarseness of the throat or the skin disease or uh, you know anything watering of your eyes you can go into many many or all unhealthy emotions and we can definitely acknowledge them and sometimes it helps us to find a remedy dr jayesh has um, quite a few times he mentioned that uh, he once uh, one patient came and he was crying crying in my wife she is like a tigress and she is bossing me and he was crying loudly he was not ready to give any symptom and doctor was saying now how do i go with homeopathy with this person because he is not you cannot ask him he would cry loudly in the um, cabin so what he said acha aap aisa kijiye aap boliye aur aisa aisa bhi kijiye so he was saying my wife is very bad she is dominating she is not allowing me to uh, do my job or uh, whatever i do she feels i am not doing anything for her and whatever her problems he was crying and doing like this for 5 minutes then doctor said okay put both your hands and take 70 and he was totally quiet then doctor could start his case he gave wonderful symptoms he also became aware that how responsible he was and why the wife was not ready to recognize that and he could prescribe a wonderful remedy so whenever we are stuck somewhere in our case taking or with our patient where they have some constant pattern that whenever i book my ticket i fall sick i had two or three patients severe lower back starts when that person had to go for a business meeting abroad or uh, travel severe and then he had to postpone then again and again like that three four five months he would keep postponing that business meeting so when we did this he became more aware that what is his problem where he is feeling insecure where he is feeling lack of confidence no courage to do business all these issues he became aware and be just acknowledge that then he felt very confident back pain is gone though he was with homeopathic remedy it used to help but particularly you would it would get very aggravated just before traveling two or three days before traveling because his mind could not take it was overpowered with fear insecurity what was the whatever the reason he experienced and then he could do business that whole story got over just with one or two sessions so therefore i definitely want to share this technique and process to as many people i can especially to doctors that we are more educated and we know as a homeopath we can understand everything so much in detail at all the levels seven levels and we can definitely practice this whenever needed whenever you feel like whenever we are stuck whenever these odd things come up it is amazing tool so i think all of you can i have some feedback any questions on this yes manali yes ma'am hi yeah. ma'am um, anyone has any question or any query or 
nothing put up on the chat. Um, okay, so anyone has any doubts regarding the process or how it works? Okay, so uh, there are two, three questions, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, Ridhima is Dr. Ridhima is asking, ma'am, sometimes a person is hiding by nature. He mm. may be manipulative. Then will such person speak truth in the process? Definitely. So what? that's what I'm saying, that what is the problem of that person? Okay, so you know that that person is manipulative, right? So here, if you find this problem in your life, that suppose my boyfriend is uh, hiding or my father is hiding, my mother-in-law is hiding, my sister is like that, my husband is like that. So it affects you. So first you work on yourself that I know he's hiding and I cannot take this. I'm very upset about it. I choose to heal and integrate that part of me. Because whoever comes in front of you is nothing but it is telling you something. So all these things, all this detailed philosophy will be learning during the workshop. Therefore, we have kept four sessions. That how layer by layer, if it is affecting us, that we have to work on it. It's not that wife comes and says, my husband is like that, treat him. No. The wife is feeling affected. She is suffering, so she has to take session. And when she changes, definitely the husband's attitude will change. This is the magic that I'm seeing every day with all my patients. In my life also. And that's why I'm more passionate about it. And so many things have changed in my life. Whatever I could not, I did not like, I worked on myself and things have definitely reversed. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah. what, what suggestions? Yeah, ma'am. What suggestions can be given during the process is the question. And how should, how should we give suggestions? Yeah, that's what no? we are going to learn in the workshop. Therefore, we have had the four sessions of workshop that one after another, there are many approaches to this whole process. It's a very uh, scientific and spiritual technique that we need to learn. Yeah, ma'am. Um, there is one more question, ma'am. Uh, a deep breath can can it be done by hypertensive patients? Yes. In fact, I have seen that that blood pressure has uh, you know reduced in a week's time. They feel that I need to reduce my uh, blood pressure tablets. Yeah, and um, also, ma'am, there is one more question: If patient is already aware of affectation is aware of feeling, then how will healing take place? So when he is aware or she is aware, that is the first step. Okay, The second step is accepting your problem. That I have hatred or I cannot tolerate injustice. Okay, So that is acceptance and then acknowledging by doing this, integrate and heal. This is the magic trick. Because we are activating our life force and allowing it to dissolve. So hatred, whatever, then I ask, okay. So there is a whole uh, procedure that we will learn in the workshop in a great detail with many demos. So first I ask, suppose you have hatred from 0 to 10, how much? Then that the patient says 8. Then we do this. After two or three rounds, I say, now say hatred. It's okay. It's not hatred. Or it's fine. It's just a word. I don't feel it. You know, that charge is dissolved. 
it's a healing process i feel it is actually one step deeper than our homeopathic cure because we directly connect with our subconscious mind and we delete all these unwanted associations unwanted beliefs ancestral patterns everything we can work with this yes Any yes um yeah uh, can we do on ourselves in any acute problem very much very much and one thing first we have to heal ourselves okay heal others you often see that when you heal others that part of that patient issues will also get healed automatically within when you heal others you also heal simultaneously it's a healing process it is not only at logical level it is a scientific spiritual process so i would like if someone is in acute pain or some headache or something that we can demonstrate just now <coughs> if anybody would like to come up because we still have 20 minutes or maybe 25 minutes uh, in 10 15 minutes i would like to show the demonstration demonstrate how it works anyone who would like to volunteer come craving, up yeah and again i would like to tell this helps with fears phobias any addictions cravings depression um so many i think everything and with dietitians and nutritionists i would really want uh, that if they can learn because i myself have had conquered so many irresistible cravings just in half an hour or maybe two times half an hour i keep doing that i have i can't when i see chocolates i can't resist i choose to heal and integrate that part of me then i say why i want to leave it see there is the whole technique that i want to teach that what kind of questions we have to ask why we have to ask and it will definitely now i don't have any issue with chocolates even if it is there i don't feel like and even never i feel like i take just half cup and enjoy that but there is no guilt trip nothing like that because whenever i used to eat anything there is a guilt trip okay i am eating sugar my weight will increase and this is bad i can't control my craving all this self sabotaging thoughts and guilt trip we can work on ourselves with so many things every day you can work on yourself is there anyone who would like to uh yes we can uh, definitely work with our family members one thumb rule is that they have to be ready you don't have to pressurize them first rule is when they are ready they because their energy sometimes is not ready to catch you so anger children are not listening to you so don't tell them that you do when children are not listening to you first work on yourself that my children to that create lot of tension i am angry i am upset um this is not done uh, i will not take this nonsense i choose to heal and integrate that so first in that case you work on your Uh, anger or yourself that is disturbing you, and then we can ask our children. Would you like to work where uh, your grasping improves or your performance 
get better. So uh, they, there was a uh, girl. Anything else you want to ask, or I'll. Ma'am, there this. is there is one volunteer actually. Yes. Yes. Uh, Doctor Rama, uh, uh, Doctor Rajeshwari Raja. Uh, mm. Ma'am, if you could unmute yourself. Yeah. I am on unmute. No, no. Uh, Doctor uh, uh, yeah. Rajeshwari, she could unmute herself. There was one question. question. Yeah, last question. Yeah, ma'am. For those who for those who block any deeper feelings, mm -hmm. it is technique. All is this technique also possible just by using the physical symptoms? Yes. See, I tell you one thing. It's really very easy. Because we don't have to worry whether they tell you the feelings or not. Suppose if someone comes and tells me, I get a pain here. Okay, I'm getting a pain here, I choose. What makes you feel that? And they will start opening up. You don't have to worry whether they are blocked or not. They will open up. So many situations when I was told that you know you always come alone in functions initially when I got married that why uh, you know your husband is not accompanying uh, this that you know people family and I used to it was a problem for me not for my husband or others that much I would not like that that again I'll go and they will ask me so I would say I, I did on myself that this is a very embarrassing. So I felt embarrassed. So I could come and understand and realize that this embarrassment is my problem. And I addressed that and to my surprise, next time nobody asked me. And even if they asked, they said, I know Dr. Jayesh is so busy. No, he can't come so far and waste five hours. So I said, thank God, you know, I was so happy that I don't have to answer everybody, 50 people, why my husband is not coming with me. It used to bug me that I'm coming, no, you feel happy that I have come. Why you are asking about somebody who has not come? So this was my issue, myself. Okay, let us start with the case. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Rajeshwari, are you there? If you could unmute yourself and come forward. And I would like her video also to be open. Yeah. That would be better. Uh, where is she? I can't see her. Yeah, even I. She is locked in from Dr. Tokyo. Rajeshwari. Dr. Okay. Rajeshwari. Hello. Yeah. Can we say hello to all of you? Yeah. I can see. Ha hello, Dr. Rajeshwari. Uh, hello. Hello, hello. ma'am. Hi, yes. Dr. Rajeshwari. Yes. Hello. So, can you tell, is it possible for you to be on video or you don't want to be? Uh, Thank you, Rajesh, Dr. Rajesh. Namaste, madam. Namaste. So, tell me, if you want to speak in Hindi, then you can speak in Hindi. No, I am comfortable in English. Oh. So tell me, tell me, Dr. Rajeshwari, what is happening? What is it that you want to work with today? Um, madam, especially uh, that aspect where, you know, when the person is not able to express or they don't feel like expressing their innermost, uh, uh, you know, thoughts or feelings. And uh, this uh, suggestion of, you know, that meditative uh, aspect or that uh, uh, approach uh, was that suggestion was very helpful mm. so I'm going to 
try that in some cases. That I felt was very yes. uh, useful. Yes. So you want to work on yourself? You have any pain or anything? Ah. Uh, uh, meaning when, madam? Yes. You want to work with yourself? I want to uh, show a demonstration that how this uh, process can be worked. So if you have any some physical pain or any issue that we can work on? Uh, it's there, but I don't know whether I'm ready right now. Oh, so take your time. No, no don't worry. Yes. Yes, madam. Yes. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you. sharing. Thank you, madam. Thank yes. you. So anybody, anybody wants to be a demo? Who wants to release their feelings, emotions, pain, some patterns where uh, uh, while uh, coming, certain things like that. I would like to yes. work if it's possible. Yes. Surely, Anka. So tell me, what is it? Um, recently, we've moved uh, in a new house. Mm -hmm. We rent a new house mm -hmm. and uh, I, I was very motivated to do this. I wanted very much. Mm -hmm. um, but after we moved, I, uh, <clears throat> for the first time in my life, I experienced some uh, uh, strong um, uh, stomach ache. I, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit stressed because there were uh, there were a lot of um, things uh, around. Uh, nothing was uh, in order. Uh, I was uh, quite uh, tired. I yeah. had I had to go to my job and take my children from school and uh, so on. And I didn't didn't have uh, so much time to put everything in order. Mm. Even now, after two weeks, nothing is in order. <laughs> so what is but, bothering you? Uh, what? What is, what is bothering, bothering me? Uh, this is stomach ache. Stomach ache, okay. Yes. So, and I have some kind of... Um, uh, I don't uh, tolerate uh, hunger, something like this. So this stomach I mean, ache is constant? It, is it constant or...? No, no, no. Um, I experienced more uh, in, in, during my sleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've noticed that uh, sometimes when I'm hungry, mm -hmm. uh, it starts aching. Mm -hmm. And doesn't, uh, uh, I don't have relief uh, only if I eat something. Okay. And which part of your stomach? Uh, right in my uh, solar plex. Solar plex. So yeah. first of all, I also would like to you to check in uh, and do the sonography. Uh, maybe for some gallstone or anything. We need to check that also because it looks very much, uh, you know, something to, with, of course, with a lot of emotions. And uh, but the site is very much like solar plexus and hunger pangs, and you cannot remain hungry. That is a very alarming thing that comes to my mind just now. But it's mm -hmm. fine. We we will surely work for that. And uh, what does this stomach pain is telling you? I thought about this, but. <laughs> Seems like uh, nothing comes to mind because I I really don't have anything to complain about in my okay. life in general. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So due to this stomach pain, when you are sleeping in your sleep, what makes you feel that when you get the pain?
some kind of restlessness, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Anything else? I've, I've, I've thought of, uh, I had some kind of uh, program, you know. I used to do meditations sometimes, not daily, but um, after I moved here, it's like I, I don't feel like I, I can't do the things that I used to do before. Mm. So how does that feel to you? When you cannot do things that you used to do before, what makes you feel I'm that? I'm not comfortable. Uncomfortable. I'm not comfortable. Yeah. What is this uncomfortable feeling? <laughs> Maybe like I'm not in my place or something. Okay, you are not in your place. Yeah. And how does that feel? If you can probe into it, huh? it's not that you have to answer. Whatever you can answer, it's fine. I feel restlessness. Restlessness. As if you are not in your own place. So we'll start the process by rubbing the hands and... <clears throat> <clears throat> you can close your eyes and repeat with me. Even though, even though, after coming to this new place, after <coughs> coming to this new place, this new house, this new house, I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable. I'm quite uncomfortable. I'm quite uncomfortable. As if I'm not in my place. As this, I'm not in my place. I cannot do many things that I could do when I was in my old house. I cannot do many things that I could do when I was in my old house. I choose to heal and integrate that part of me. To heal and integrate that part of me. All of you must have, uh, you keep doing, huh? You must have observed that she took a lot of deep breath while saying these emotions. Just observe that. It was very difficult for her to acknowledge. Just observe all these things. Even though, Even though I am very uncomfortable. I'm very uncomfortable. In this new house. With this new house. Which I was looking for. Which I was looking for. But after coming here. But after coming here. There is some restlessness and uncomfortable experience. There is some restlessness and uncomfortable experience. I get stomach pain. I get stomach pain. Especially in sleep. Especially in sleep. And when I'm hungry. And when I'm hungry. I cannot tolerate hunger. I cannot tolerate hunger. What happens when you what have happens? What I'm asking you, what happens when you have to tolerate hunger? I'm asking. I need to eat. <laughs> Otherwise, what will happen? Otherwise, uh, I feel something like almost panic but not panic not there but some kind of agitation i'm not sure is the right word in english it's fine whatever you can see quite agitated and maybe not 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 anger but is it impatient um, yeah Mm -hmm. I want to go home immediately and, immediately. and relax and uh, eat and uh, take my time. Yes, I choose to heal and integrate that part of me. To heal and integrate that part of me. Whenever I feel hungry, whenever I feel hungry, I immediately have to eat. I immediately have to eat. I have to go home and take my time. I have to go home and take my time. 
this is a very compulsive programming that I am having. Please this, this is very compulsive. Very? Compulsive. Compulsive, Compul compulsive programming. Programming. That I am having. That I am having. I choose to heal and integrate that part of me. I choose to heal and integrate that part of me. Now take seven deep breaths by putting both your hands on the chest. What is happening? I'm so conscious about what is going on with me. What Still, is going? when I close my eyes, I I, I try to breathe and um, deeply, but I couldn't. Mm -hmm. It's like air; it, it doesn't go inside until the end. I I'm not. I don't know how to explain this. Okay. It's like, it's, it's my breath is not efficient. Okay. And when, while I was breathing, I saw my, myself like a stick, so emaciated and so thin. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Actually, and I would how, like to be like this, but I'm not. <laughs> and how does that feel? When you saw yourself like a emaciated. child, like an emaciated child, I, I saw myself. But how did you feel? How is how did you feel about this child who was emaciated? I I I know I'm not, but I felt like like I'm pity of of him. Yeah. So can you relate that this hunger is to do something in your subconscious mind about deprived thin emaciated child? It's very possible, but not to, not to, to me as as a child. I I, I uh, never had experience uh, experiences like this, but. Um, when I, I think about <clears throat> my uh, ancestors, yes. you know, uh, I think about uh, uh, that trans uh, generation. Trans yes, maybe I, I don't know something from there. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there were times when my grandfather, grandparents, or, or my grand grandparents at very difficult times yes. they never they they didn't have uh, they have to work very hard to get uh, the food. food yeah yeah, yeah. so this is all is stored or recorded in our subconscious mind and when you take deep breath many things that needs to be healed will surface will appear as a uh, as a, an event or some kind of how you saw a picture of initiated child because you need to get dissociate 
you need from to, that. Yeah, you need uh, to dissociate this ancestral suffering. There is one more thing. Uh, we will. We are about to to build our own house. This yes. uh, this uh, thing. Uh, this house rent is temporary. Mm. Somehow, uh, our mm, our house house will be uh, at. Um, we will have more um, space to to. Uh, I don't know how to say this in English. To raise our own food, you know. Okay. Uh -huh. I, I understand. That, you want that, to plant food. Yes, yes, yes. In the garden. I want to plant my and and to be hel a healthy. Healthy. Uh, yes, I understand. Uh, organic and vegetable. Yeah. yeah, organic vegetables, fruit. Yeah. Uh, so, around and, in your around your house. Yeah. Yes, and it is this issue that what we are eating, it's not proper food, it's not clean food. Mm. And I can't wait to have this opportunity to, to do this for me and my family, you know? And maybe it, um, also this thing is in my mind somehow too much. I, I, well, I don't know why it's happening this to me right now. I'm, I don't understand. Yeah. See, it is this association or a kind of a belief. We need to work on that. We need to heal yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So just start with that. I feel. I feel. That a kind of food that we are, we are eating as a family. That the, the kind of food we are eating as a family is not good it's not good what is it you can say add your words and statements oh. what do you think about this food it's not healthy and it's not um, nu nu nutritive it's yes. not yeah yeah healthy and nutritive yes Okay. And uh, I, I don't like that or I cannot accept it. I don't like that and I cannot accept it. Therefore, I want to build my house and have therefore, my own vegetables. Therefore, I want to build my house and get my own vegetables. And fruits. And fruits. Healthy vegetables and fruits. Healthy vegetables and fruits. Because whatever we are eating, because whatever we are eating is very unhealthy. Is very unhealthy. Then what will happen if you eat unhealthy? I never thought about this. It's just the idea that it's not clean food. I'm yeah. not afraid that we are going to get sick or something. Yeah, but I just not, want to, yeah. to be healthy. Yes, so just say that I have a strong belief. I have a strong belief. Uh, by rubbing your palm, huh? rubbing the side of your palm. I have a strong belief that we are not eating clean food. I have a strong belief that we are not eating, we are not eating uh, clean food. Therefore, I'm waiting for my own food to be grown. Therefore, I'm waiting for my own food to be grown. I choose to heal and integrate that part of me. I choose to heal and integrate that part of me. And I'm feeling restless in this house. And I'm feeling restless in this house. I also feel that things are not organized well after coming here. I also feel that things are not organized well after I came in this house. That makes me feel uncomfortable. That made me feel uncomfortable. What else it makes you feel when it is not organized? It is... I can breathe now. Yeah, I can't. 
You can or you cannot? I can. You can, can. read. Wow, I great, yeah. great. I choose and to uh, heal and integrate. Yeah. I choose to heal and integrate the, the, that part of me. That part of me. So you were saying something. You keep doing this and say. Yes. You were saying something. I know I have to be patient. Mm -hmm. And I know it, it is a, a period of uh, transition. Yes. I know I will be fine. Yes. <laughs> this but still, but still there is impatience and uncomfortable experience. But still there is impatience and uncomfortable experience. I choose to heal and integrate that part of me. I choose to heal and integrate that part of me. Anything else you want to add into? How are you feeling? Now take seven deep breaths. So what happened? I I breathe better. Uh, one minute. Dr. Swati, it is seven. Uh, yes. Yes, I counted. <laughs> oh, uh, someone was asking me whether it is seven or seventy. See, minimum is seven and go on also. I don't disturb them. Yes. Okay. So tell, tell me what happened now you can breathe. Yes. Yes. Um, no, no image appeared now. Um, I know someone wrote uh, in the chat that um, this pain is associated with uh, a stomach uh, uh, ulcer. ulcer ulcer or maybe gastritis. Mm -hmm. But um, I never in my life experienced something like this. So I'm 100 percent sure that it's emotional yes that's why i didn't go to the doctor you know yeah, yeah. i'm not sure i'm not sure i will do it maybe i will wait uh, some time yeah so after this process you wait or you can uh, write me on whatsapp we figure it out but how are you feeling just now actually now i experience i experienced some disturbance in my solar plex right now it's not pain it's something there i'm feeling good <laughs> great so now just think about that restlessness or uncomfortable feeling in this house just think about it and tell us i just have to accept it before was it was uh, it was possible to accept easily uh in a conscient way mm -hmm. um i knew it's temporary temporary and uh, i had to accept it but i think deep down i was restless now nah, you were not you could not your inner consciousness did not accept it yeah something like this so now just think can you accept it right from the bottom of your consciousness or maybe not? 70 80 percent <laughs> maybe not 100 uh, percent but actually i'm waiting for the workshop in march so i know <laughs> it will be healing also there <laughs> sure but you can still do this 
uh, on your stomach pain and this uncomfortable feeling and you can share in the group that okay. what happened after a week okay so i really thank you anka for coming up for the demo and uh, wonderful uh, i think it was meant to be because i was waiting for someone to do the demo yes um and when i saw nothing is is going on then i took my chance <laughs> very nice very nice so we could okay. we could definitely uh, you know to the group we could uh, uh, make them know that how these emotions quickly they release they make some kind of uh, resolution comes up so i could have gone in a great detail it takes at least one hour generally but just to show the short demo that how emotions can shift in few minutes can i ask you some <clears throat> one question yes you know uh, there is some time since i work uh, uh, with myself uh, i'm more conscious uh, I, about my life about what is going on uh, around me um i uh, attended some workshops i work with homeopathy i i use uh, remedies mm. and still why it's so i i'm so easy i feel like i'm so easily disturbed by things it, it's normal i look around so, me and yeah some people so are not it. conscious and are not uh, being disturbed so easily about things that happening in their lives so i try to Uh, be more zen you know <laughs> so what and i feel like i'm more um, um uh, how to say vulnerable somehow yes so what you can do if you wish if you feel you are ready you can just do on your own that why i'm so sensitive and vulnerable in spite of attending any workshops that must be something we need to do even one and one session also but you try it you see after a week 10 days how you feel you can contact me okay we'll figure it out because sometimes things are so much in deep as we talk ancestral patterns ancestral suffering that we need to work with some experience person or some experience you know okay. yeah our mind can always resist not to go further so you try because you have attended workshops you have done many workshops with us uh, please uh, uh, try and do this and see and if there is any problem you uh, whatsapp me i will do this and uh, we will talk after sure week. yes thank you so much thank you, you anka so you. And, yes so could you see how the shift occurred because we acknowledge the whole this process is all about accept acknowledge integrate and heal yourself there must be something to do with organizing things are not in proper place so many things one can find the remedy also from this one whatever way you want to work you are free to work but main thing is close the session on a happy note not when the patient is crying and upset and you say okay now i'll give you remedy or uh, we'll meet ne after a week no that's why i had to wait till she feels more comfortable it's exactly the opposite word i hear from each and every patient if someone says i have lack in my financial career i don't have money and when that person says now i feel abundance or if that person imagine something which has a meaning or uh, it is like a metaphor of abundance then it's a good time to stop or uh, close the therapy and then do next time because one day everything will cannot happen and therefore again i am telling you we have kept four days step by step to learn 
to experience it's a workshop you also will experience you will also work on yourself it is not only to help your patient first help ourselves learn the technique experience the change and definitely this will take you a long way with your children with anybody who is ready to work with my husband or with, with my children if something is not happening i cannot tell them that okay sit down and do this process i have to work what disturb or disturbance that i am experiencing with them so i think anything that anybody wants to ask ma'am hmm? uh, there there are two questions Yes. Uh, Dr. Bhavna is asking, can we heal depression with this process? Yes, yes, yes. But again, I am telling you, if that patient is ready, because in depression generally it is a you know running away, it's avoidance mechanism. But even little bit patient feels. Okay, these yeah, are you do this. Suppose if any family members of mine, okay, okay, why don't you cure me? Why don't you do something? That time I can convince or convey. Okay, there is a simple process. If you are ready, let's do it and start with the basic things. If that person says I don't get sleep, start with that. Don't go into emotions because that will eventually come out or uh, it will. you know eventually surface mm -hmm. so it yes. can be used but not with the force or because uh, the wife wants uh, husband to get well yes ma'am so if wife wants husband to get well first work with the wife that what are you experiencing because your husband has depression and then you will see second or third session the husband will also say no i also want to get well yes oh ma'am there is one more question how to help people with dementia and deteriorating who are deteriorating in their health yes we can do the same thing but uh, suppose that person who is having dementia if that person feels ki see i am um, Uh, forgetting and see again i am telling you that patient should feel like getting out of this then definitely that i am forgetting what will happen then how will do so that therefore i am saying that if you attend the workshop you will get all your answers because it's it's not just in half an hour or one hour i can teach you everything in total memory loss we cannot have because they have lost the memory for some reason their soul level they have some agenda again i am telling you if my mother has lost the memory if i am troubled or i am upset i will work with my own self um doctor not always to cure others actually yes it's not that you want to show the all the results and show that how these many cases i cured and it's not thing like that it is more that you can offer a gentle tool easy tool for somebody who can feel happy easy and i mean they can enjoy their life Doctor Lalita has asked, uh, "Does this technique help with anxiety and fears?" Definitely, very, in it a is. very big way. In a very big way. Yeah. Lots of cases on anxiety. Yes, ma'am. Even the youngsters. See, nowadays many youngsters. No, so I do work with them, and they have come out in two or three sessions. They are so efficient. They are such a lovely, creative uh, uh, students, or maybe the young uh, boys and girls but with this due to anxiety their whole efficiency goes for a top but uh, yeah we can very much uh, 
help them if they are ready, not because the parent wants them to be better. Thank you so much, ma'am, today for this wonderful session and the demonstration was too good. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much, ma'am, for being Thank here you, today. She wanted to say something. Yeah, she is also wants to say something, ma'am. Over to you. So I just wanted to uh, thank you, ma'am, for the wonderful session as usual. And thank you, Anka, for, you know, coming forward. Uh, that takes a lot of courage, right? But it helps you. It helps everybody. So thank you so much for this. So uh, I just wanted to maybe just wrap up the session to say that this coming workshop in March is going to be very, uh, you know, intensive. Like we're going to go in detail. Uh, we're going to have four sessions by Dr. Raju, where she's going to be focusing on this emotional release process. Um, and uh, she'll use different, um, focus on different areas, let's say fear, addictions, and you know, we'll cover like different sections. There'll be a lot of demonstrations, a lot of chances for question and answer. Uh, we've done that, uh, you know, last year, it has been excellent. Um, uh, you know, we learned it from her. We've started already using it in our practice on ourselves, and it has tremendously helped us. Uh, so there'll be four sessions by Dr. Raju, ma'am. There'll be other four sessions which Prajakta and I will take. And these sessions are also very much in line with emotional release process because they are meditative in nature. And if you see all of this beautifully yeah. amalgamates together, no homeopathy case, yeah. emotional release process, uh, just closing your eyes and coming in the now awareness using your breath all these are different you know sometimes these are different labels different names but they're just different means to the same thing yes. it? they all come together I so really the this, yeah the whole idea of the workshop is to you know bring all these techniques together and then so that we are equipped to use whatever tool we can as they are needed yeah, and they seamlessly integrate, integrate. They come together so well. And sometimes, you know, uh, if I have a session of a homeopathic case, and in between the session, I feel, let's just do emotional release or, you know, forget the case taking, let's work on the breath or just let's do meditation. So they just seamlessly integrate. And as ma'am rightly said, we will use this in our practice and you will learn how to use it. But it's important that we first understand and learn ourselves and heal ourselves. That's the first place. And from here, uh, we learn how yes. to take this forward. Yeah? Yes, because see, if you experience that after taking that 70 breath, how your restlessness, your anxiety or your insecurities are vanishing, then you know, oh, wow. You know, then you can practice with somebody who are ready. Therefore, it is a workshop where we have kept alternate days so that you can work on yourself, see the results, experience it, work with your friends or anybody you want to. It's a journey. And it, I am really passionate about this. <laughs> Teaching as well as working with my patients and working on myself even my computer doesn't work or anything so one small thing i just want to say yeah my com computer starts working if i do i'm frustrated now everything is gone my god everything just starts it's amazing it's uh, really still i'm surprised how it works but it's all energy so uh, one patient you, you know she used to get so so unwell, Dr. Jayesh, we work in the same premise, I mean, same uh, clinic, but uh, different place. So she would come every third day, fourth day, very old kind of patient. Then she was child and now she's grown up. So we have like friend, friendly rapport. So I said, why you're coming every third day? What is happening every time you have, I have this, I have that. What is this going on? So she said, uh, she said, I don't know. This is my pattern, you know. I I get well with that. And then something else is happening. And sorry is giving me medicine. I, I said, if you don't mind, let's do this process. She knows about this process. So I said, let's do a process on this. 
something is ending and the new thing is coming whatever she said exactly i said let's work on that half an hour and immediately she came after 15 20 days and i asked her where were you i couldn't see you in the clinic she said no yeah, that uh, thing you know i was also doing at home because i got so bored what is this every or physically this that and now she is coming once a month uh, for her regular follow up so this is how i learn from all my patients i learn from others more than anybody so thank you thank you thank you for uh, doing this today this session and being with us Thank, thank you. you so much, ma'am. Thank, thank you, Anka. Manali. Thank you, Project Tal. Thank you, Sweety. Yeah. See you all uh, at the workshop. Uh, we are starting thank it in you, March. Ma thank you. Yes. Thanks. 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 Those who have already registered and those who haven't, uh, the early bird offer will end on the eighth of February. If you wish to register for the workshop, you could write to us on homeopathy musings at the rate gmail dot com or contact us on the uh coordinators numbers that uh, are provided so these are the program details as i told you the early bird offer is till 8th of february and uh, these are the contact numbers if you could take it down um uh, for to contact us if you want to register for the workshop kindly take the benefit of the offer and uh, join us for the workshop we would be glad to have you all on board Thank you everyone have a good day